the wild, wild west. Jim West, Desperado, Rough Rider. No, you don't want nada. There's just no accounting for bad taste. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst songs to top the Billboard Top 100 chart. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be ranking the worst songs to reach number 1 on the Billboard Top 100 chart. Songs from any decade and genre will be considered, just so long as they were released after the Hot 100 officially debuted in the summer of 1958. Additionally, these songs must have hit number one, even if it was just for a single week. Of course, keep in mind the idea of worst is fairly subjective. Number 10, Informer, Snow. So, what are the odds of a white Canadian reggae rapper hitting number one on the Billboard Top 100 for seven consecutive weeks? Well, fairly good, apparently, at least if you're looking back to Informer, the 1992 hit from Toronto, Ontario's own Snow. In the chart's defense, the early 90s were a strange time. How else could one explain how this slice of cringe-worthy reggae fusion could have been so popular? The song fronts with a certain attitude and aggression, but for modern-day enjoyment factor, Jim Carrey's imposter parody from his days on In Living Color has far more to offer. Number 9. Bad Day Daniel Powder. Is there anything inherently offensive about Daniel Powder's 2005 hit, Bad Day? Well, not really, but it's the song's relentless blandness that makes us question the chart's validity. Specifically, it's how Bad Day seems to have been tailor-made to be used in advertising that makes it so forgettable and vanilla. In fact, it appeared in a French Coca-Cola ad months before it was released, and it has carried on its commercial legacy in the years since. All in all, it's a telling sign that Bad Day is the sort of faceless pop music which is better served as background noise than as an actual song. Number 8, Ebony and Ivory, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder. Ebony and Ivory live together in perfect harmony. What would it take to end racism and bring peace and healing across the racial divide? Not this. It's true that people of all races, color, and creed were united in disinterest and a mild gagging feeling from the saccharine melody and chintzy keyboard lines. Learn to give each other what we need to survive together alive. But Ebony and Ivory's naive attempt to single handedly improve race relations around the world had limited effect. While the song was well intended, it was swinging well above its weight and attempting to accomplish something well out of its scope. Something self imposed race ambassadors, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, should have been all too aware of. Side by side on my piano, keep on, oh Lord, why don't we? Number, eight. Oh no. Number seven, London Bridge, Fergie. When I come to the club, step aside. Pop the seats, don't be heavy in the line. We'll admit that there are a number of things right with Fergie's debut single. For starters, that sample from Tower of Powers down to the nightclub is undeniably funky. And Fergie is as sexy and in control as she ever was in the song's accompanying music video. But the problem here is repetition. That little snippet of horns gets old really quickly, and Fergie's flow just doesn't sell the song, especially when it comes to that corny chorus. It might have topped the charts, but in retrospect, London Bridge isn't much of a statement to open a solo career with. Number 6, I'm Too Sexy, Right Said Fred. I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt. 
but so sexy it hurts. Unlike other countries, UK listeners actually stood their ground and didn't allow Right Said Fred's signature song hit number one. However, America did, and so here we are. I'm too sexy for your party, too sexy for your party. No way I'm disco dancing. With its ridiculously simple lyrics, easy to grasp melody, and its borrowing of a Jimi Hendrix riff, I'm Too Sexy is definitely an earworm, and a fun, harmless novelty song. But a Billboard Top 100 chart topper? Not so much. And I do my little turn on the catwalk. It's silly and beyond lightweight, and the band's lack of compatibly successful follow-up is proof that while the chart makes mistakes from time to time, it also corrects them. Too sexy for my cat, for pussy, for pussy cat. Number 5. Butterfly. Crazy Town. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady. You're my butterfly. Looking back, the new metal movement is hard to explain and impossible to rationalize. Through the haze of nostalgia, it was a climate where apparently anyone with bad tattoos and a worse attitude could achieve major label success and score a number one single. Case in point, Crazy Town and their pseudo ballad, Butterfly. Hey, sugar mama, come and dance with me. The smartest thing you ever did was take a chance with me. There's nothing particularly heavy or metal about this track, and the band let loose with some metaphors about love, sex, and. Sid and Nancy? Come, my lady, come, come, my lady. You're my butterfly, sugar, baby. The only worthwhile aspect of this track is the Red Hot Chili Pepper sample it's built on. So why not stick to their pretty little ditty jam instead? Number 4. You're 16. Ringo Starr. You're all rivers and girls. Who want a girl? The title may seem inappropriate, and it is. But this cover of Johnny Burnett's You're 16 was nevertheless a number one hit for ex Beatle Ringo Starr back in 1974. The song itself is some form of an ode to young love. The compliments end there, however, as Starr's cover just hasn't aged well. Coming across as a hokey and middling pop tune in addition to the obvious problematic nature of the lyrics. There's Sir Paul McCartney singing a kazoo-esque vocal solo somewhere there in the middle, but when that's the most interesting aspect of a number one single, perhaps the charts deserve something with a bit more oomph. Number 3. Laffy Taffy, D4L. Okay, we know there's room for minimalism in pop music, but this is ridiculous. Laffy Taffy was the number one hit for Southern hip hop group D4L during the mid 2000s, and for the life of us, we don't know why. Maybe it's that maddening synth which hammers into the listener's brain, or D4L's seemingly endless list of confectionery references. Whatever the case, Laffy Taffy is best left forgotten as not only one of 2005's worst hip hop hits, but one of the genre's most embarrassing hits of all time. <laughs> Number 2 Disco Duck Rick Dees and his cast of idiots. Went to a party the other night. Disco Duck wasn't the only disco track to hit number one during the dance crazy 1970s, but it's certainly one of the strangest. Rick Dees was a Memphis based disc jockey when he wrote this bizarro novelty song, and followed the timeless recipe of adding a group of groovy backup singers and a Donald Duck vocal to a generic disco beat, and voila! Instant chart success. It may seem strange to think today that such a lame cash grab could, at one point, be the number one song in the US, but then there were also a lot of drugs going around at the time, so there's that. Before we get to our number one pick, here are a few honorable, or is that dishonorable, mentions. Can you blow my whistle, baby, whistle, baby? But she got me on the counter. Wasn't me. Saw me kissing on the sofa. Wasn't me. This is why, this is why, this is why I'm hot. hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. fly. You ain't cause you not. Okay, Theodore? Okay. Okay, Alvin? Number one, the Chipmunk song. Christmas Don't Be Late. David Seville and the Chipmunks. Christmas, 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 Christm
It's a holiday staple you either love or hate. But let's be honest, you probably hate this one. The Chipmunk song was credited to David Seville and the Chipmunks, but this Billboard smash was written and performed by Ross Begdasarian Sr., who also handled the high-pitched chipmunk effects. Subtitled Christmas Don't Be Late, the track not only became a number one hit, but sadly, a seasonal tradition, which continued to chart years after its initial release. For some, however, just hearing the chipmunk song once a year is more than enough to last a lifetime. Shut it off! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.